everybody. Welcome back uh, to part two in this series of the budget app. If you haven't watched part one, I highly recommend you do that first. Uh, if you have done part one, welcome back. Glad to have you for part two, uh, where we go over the spend chart. Um, I did the spend chart very similarly to part one, where we build the chart bare bones style and then um, slowly build onto that chart. So. Um, I'm glad to have you and let's get to it. Before we begin, let me tell you, the spend chart was a true exercise in trial and error. And the first part, working with classes and objects, was a bit of a different tiger, but the chart was a whole different animal. String manipulation, building the chart, using various character representation and substitution, percentages, with no modules, libraries, things like that, was a real beast. But I was able to get it done. It's passing, and today we're going to walk all the way through how I did it right here in the part two of the series. I worked on it pretty much the same way as the first part of the project by building the bones of the chart. Um, and I'm going to show you um, how I did I'm going to do this using PyCharm, um, but don't worry, we'll move it over into Replit at the end of this video. To begin, uh, let's put some budget categories into a list, since that's the data type used in the original print function for the project. We'll then create our title and store it in the chart variable, then input a new line using the reversed built-in for our row of numbers. Let's add them to the title and make sure that our numbers print as strings. Input new line. Let's check this real quick and make sure we're on the right track. Looks good. Next, we need to create a row of dashes. Uh, for now, I'm just going to multiply it by 10. I realize that that's not accurate, but it's just for the moment. Let's input new line. Now to print out the names of the categories vertically. This was very challenging because I hate while loops. I hate them so much that I was willing to kill hours of my life figuring out how to avoid them. And I was so happy to discover the zip asterisk. It prints the list out into rows of each character just as shown, which is so great. And to make it work, just join them together. Then new line. And there we have it, our bones of the chart. We don't have the pipes yet. Um, there aren't any bars yet. And if you see the category names below, the clothing category is only printing as long as the shortest category name. Remember, spacing is everything in this chart. It must be precise. So the additional row after the vertically printed category names won't fly. But for now, here it is, our skeleton spend chart, and we can totally build up from this. Now, can this be done different ways? Sure, you can do, you can do these things any way that helps you best understand the concepts and instructions. But feel free to work with what's here to make it better or more Pythonic if you wish. You can probably jump right in and tackle any area of the chart first. But for me, I went to work on getting the category names printed correctly at the bottom. I guess you can say the percentage bar scared me a little and my fear was becoming so overwhelmed that I'd quit altogether. So I pushed that aside and saved it for last. With the names, we need to get them padded with white space so their lengths are all the same for printing. In order to do that, we need to find the longest category name and then fill in the shorter names with the appropriate amount of spacing. We can find the longest string in a list using the len and max built-ins and store them into a variable that I've named height. Then using list comprehension, we create a new list of names that are padded with the correct number of white space. The list now looks like this.
Next, let's put our pipes on and make sure they are right justified. We can do this by adjusting our already existing string of nums by transforming it into an F string. We know how many characters to justify it to because we aren't going any higher than 100%. So the three digits of 100 in a pipe gives us four and that's the number we need. So uh, let's not, let's do that and not forget to put our new line back. I do wanna stop real quick and let you know that when we transfer this code from PyCharm into Replit, there's going to be tweaks needing to be worked out and that what I'm doing right now is just explaining the mechanics of it. Hopefully everybody is cognizant of the fact that it won't pass if we simply do just a copy and paste when this is all over, but it will after some adjustments. adjustments. Um, I just wanna put this reminder out there, so thank you for your patience. Hey there! If you made it this far and enjoy what you're seeing, why not subscribe? I upload fresh content all the time. Thanks for watching. Are we ready to tackle the bars now? Let's do it. Let's store some mock percentages into a variable by the same name and put them into a list. Next, we'll create a for loop to iterate over our percentages list. And if we have a percentage in there that is greater than or equal to a number in our chart, number row, then it will put our O character at that number row. Uh-oh, looks like we have a problem with our original chart string. What we need to do to fix this is take our new line command from our original string and put it at the end of our percentage for loop. Let's try it now. Looks better, but it's still not right. It's not printing it in the order of our list, which should start with 10, then 70, and then 30. We can fix this by just adding an else with three empty spaces to our if statement. Perfect. Now the last thing we need to do at this point is get our spacing up to speed. This means that we need to do three things. Move our dash line over, move our padded vertical category names over. And lastly, this is an easily missed spacing issue. We need to make sure that each row has the appropriate amount of spaces. Let's move our dashes over first by four spaces. Great. Next, let's move our category names over by four plus one. We need to add the additional space because our names starts under the second dash. So far, everything looks pretty good, but looks can be deceiving. As of right now, if we look at our output, you will see that we are missing one space at the end of each row where our bars are. We are also missing spaces at the end of our vertical category names. If we have three categories for our spend chart, that means that we need to account for five spaces to start, then nine spaces, which is three spaces for each name, bringing us to a total of 14 spaces per row. On this graphic, the lines in bright green represent our missing space. To fix this issue, all we need to do is add one space to our new line addition under our for loop and then add two spaces to our join string in our padded name for loop. Now our spacing is perfect for the whole chart. But before we forget, we need to eliminate that extra row way down at the very bottom, easily taken care of with a right strip on the print call for the chart. And that's it. We've gone as far as we can here since we can't calculate our percentages accurately without our objects. Let's head over to Replit and talk about it over there. 
Since we now need to pull information from our objects, we need to loop through a couple things, nested things. To begin, we need to create two lists, one for our padded names, just like we did in PyCharm, and another to get our percentages, the with D list. We'll loop through our categories to get our names, append them to our names list, implement our height variable, just like in PyCharm, and then put them into our padded list. It's pretty much just all the same, except we need to retrieve our names from a different source. For our percentages, we need a total, and this is where it gets a little tricky. To do this, we need to stay in our original category for loop by iterating over the items in the category ledger. I created an amount variable just so that I didn't have to type out the item and amount in brackets so many times. Um, because our withdrawals are always below zero, as they are negative deductions, they're pretty easy to pull from the ledger and append to our with D list. Using our round and sum built-in, we can get our total amount of withdrawals and add it to our running total. We'll need to make this an integer, which turns the number positive for mathematical purposes and to eliminate the float. Next, we need a sum total of all withdrawals so that we can take each withdrawal total for each category and multiply it by 100. Then we divide by the whole total to get our percentages. I know that sounds crazy confusing, so I drew up a, I drew up a graphic for you to check out. With our category totals in our with D list, we will iterate over that list in a for loop using X, and then we will store our data into the per value variable. Our percentage for food is 65%, clothing 22%, and auto 13%. Keeping in mind that the instructions state that we need to round down to the nearest 10, all we need for that is uh, our round built in multiply by 10 and then divide by 10 to round down and then append our percentages list to show the data as 60, 20, and 10. Now we can build our chart just like we did in PyCharm. In fact, I'm fairly certain we could have just copied and pasted this portion over and it would have worked just fine. And there you have it, a passing budget app. Hopefully this video explains clearly enough for you to understand what Free Code Camp is asking for with this challenge. Feel free to write it up in your own way and see if you can make it more Pythonic. Thanks for watching.